What you're looking at is just a simple piano cover of the world-renowned Japanese single hit song Plastic Love, originally sung by Maria Takeuchi and composed by her husband Tatsuro Yamashita. Although both are highly respected due to the accomplishments that they have done since the early 1980s, what we are watching right now is a sleeping giant that will flip the modern Japanese music industry upside down. At first glance, this kind of piano cover you can find an abundance of online. However, what sets this particular cover apart from the rest is its thumbnail. Somewhere down the line, you must have seen this thumbnail on your YouTube feed, and trust me, you are not the only one. Although the image isn't in the best quality, what I see is the expression of a young man pouring his heart out to whatever he's playing. A lot of questions rise up when you see this thumbnail. Why is he screaming like that? Especially to a song that many people already know is slow and melancholic. In a weird way, it certainly invites you to click, and what you get when you watch it is what I mentioned earlier, an eccentric young man giving it all he has to offer to honestly nobody but himself and the camera, which is honestly quite fitting when you realize that this man will be the same man who will destroy all the Japanese music billboards and create a mass cult following literally just one year after uploading this video. This is the life of Fujikaze. In order to understand Fujikaze, you need to first understand his upbringing. Born in a small town called Satosho, located in the Okoyama prefecture, Fujikaze was always surrounded by music. <laughs> His first ever instrument was, you guessed it, the piano. Fujikaze was known to be a quick learner, so much so he began to play piano in a really weird and unorthodox way. When we watch someone play piano, we notice two things, the piece that they are playing and their movement. Traditional pianists tend to be very gentle with their piano. Fujikaze, on the other hand, really wanted to make sure that you heard him loud and clear. <laughs> now, I'm no piano expert, but something is clear. When Fujikaze plays, he's going to give it all he got. He knew his potential. The numbers on his YouTube channel showed that. But Fujikaze wanted to see if he could take his skills to the next level. And what better way to do that? By gaining a new perspective outside of Japan. not uncommon for a lot of aspiring Japanese artists to go abroad in order to broaden their music perspective. Fujikaze wanted to do the same. He decided to go to New York to see what his music was missing, or perhaps what the Japanese music industry was missing. New York has always been a place known for producing talented musicians, artists like Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, and 50 Cent to name a few. In fact, perhaps Japan's most well-known female singer, Hikaru Uchi, Tata was born in the heart of New York City. Overall, taking the trip to New York changed Fujikaze for the better, because when he returned to Japan, just like many artists that came before him, he found himself an opportunity to make a name for himself within the Japanese music industry by spreading the message of love. With a new breath of fresh air, Fujikaze returned to Japan and ended up moving from his small city of Satoshi to Tokyo, where he would produce two back-to-back -back platinum records. His first studio album was called Help Ever Hurt Never, and out of the 11 songs included in that album, five of them were hit singles. Shiru no Ga Iwa, Fujikaze's most popular song and having over 68 million views on YouTube, is in his very first ever 
album. When this album was released, it hit the ground running. Other than the 250,000 physical copies sold, he would do a nationwide tour the very same year. Fuchikaze had prior experience playing in the front of his fans, but only in small crowds. Due to his rising fame, however, gone are the days of playing in small venues. Say hello. <laughs> to sold out theaters and sometimes even stadiums. But Fujikaze wasn't through just yet because we haven't even talked about his second album yet, Love All Serve All. As if this first album wasn't enough, Love All Serve All was basically a message to Japan from Fujikaze himself telling the country that I'm here to stay. As this album has an incredible seven hit singles compared to the previous album's four. The best songs on this album being Kirari and Matsuri, my personal favorites. And with this this much success, now people really, and I mean really, want to see you play. And while there hasn't been an official tour for his recent album, to this day, he is selling out stadiums with absolute ease. Surprisingly enough, by the time this video comes out, he will be doing his first international live show in Los Angeles as well as New York this year. A lot of Fujikaze's music, which again played around the theme of happiness and love, seemed to have resonated to anybody listening, especially during a time when the world really needed someone to sing upbeat music. Perhaps Fujikaze was there at the right place at the right time. There's an old Japanese proverb that can describe his success perfectly. A nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Fujikaze, against all odds, through years of self-doubt and hard work, found a way to avoid the hammer completely and is now enjoying worldwide success. On one of his videos labeled, Me Trying to Dance to Fujikaze's Kiari, amazing title by the way, there was this one comment that describes him well. Some people see him as a god, but he's just a dude that likes to make music for our entertainment. Overall, Fujikaze was born to be a star. He was born to be Japan's number one singer and was born to play Plastic Love on piano in that tiny room all those years ago. Mother, mother.